Hello everybody and welcome to episode I believe 32. It's it's been a couple weeks since we recorded. Um but I think it's episode 32. I I, I quit counting a long time ago. After after a, like a couple weeks of fighting off illnesses and still dealing <laughs> with some of it like it was it was good, a, a good time to just be like ah, I think we can take a little bit of a break. Um but while we were gone, well, I I, I was gone. I, I think you were, you were still doing stuff as far as uh, some of your streams. I saw the, uh, the sort of. Sonic, the the, the Sonic uh, Triple Trouble. I, I saw that uh, your your interview with uh, I'm now drawing a blank on the guy's name. But uh, Noah Noah Copeland. Yeah. Um. And the fact that it's been a couple weeks, I've completely forgotten that uh, I'm Jeff. From just one more <laughs> level, um, and we have Tony from Procedurally Generated. So, howdy, uh, how, howdy everybody. <laughs> how are you doing, Tony? Uh, getting over COVID. That's fun. Huh. That's uh, it's it's been a fun couple of weeks for for for, <laughs> bo- for both sides. We have eight uh, people in the house, and eight people had COVID at one point or another ooh. in the last two weeks. So, just people being like, "Here, you have it now." Yeah. Okay, you it, have exactly. it now. Exactly. It's your turn. Take yeah. it. Tag your it. Um, so, over the last couple of weeks, uh, we were originally going to, going to talk about, um, well, Square Enix and their financial results and their investor call, where they talked about selling off IDOS Montreal and Crystal Dynamics and just what appears, appears I mean, it still appears to be a uh, potential either an all-or-nothing sell of the rest of Square Enix or chopping the, the company up and other companies buying bits and pieces. They, I think they're talking more towards wanting to sell sort of piecemeal. Uh, that, that seems to be the way that uh, people are starting to lean, but I don't know. Like, it seems weird to break yeah. up Square Enix and sell them off, you know, in a bunch of different uh, yeah. ways. And how do you do that and what franchises go where and... Uh, who gets Dragon Quest? Who would get Final Fantasy? Who would get whatever else? Uh, you yeah, know, the like Octopath Star stuff. Because, um, you know, it would obviously, I, I would imagine that some of the, the properties like Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo would be fairly interested in, you know, trying to maintain some of the, uh, you know, exclusivity stuff, whether it's like Octopath Traveler or Triangle Strategy or. Uh, the the Dragon Quest 3D remake. And, there would be a like, huge bidding war for the Dragon Quest and the Final Fantasy franchises, I can yes. tell you. Um, I, I, and yeah. both Nintendo and Sony would be going after both of them because both of those companies <laughs> have big histories with those franchises. And, I mean, one thing... I mean, if Sony was to, ac- to acquire, uh, I was going to say acquisition, um, Square Enix, but... Essentially, if they were to buy Square Enix, they pretty much got rid of all of their Japanese <coughs> studios except for Team Asobi. Yeah. They, it, they basically... It, uh, so it's like if they acquired Square Enix, that would fill that void and then some. Yeah, but it seems weird to sell off all of your Japanese franchises only to <laughs> buy a Japanese yeah. developer. So... Yeah, uh, um, I don't know. If 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 they let Square, if they bought Square Enix and let Square Enix make Knack Three, I'm all for it. Fine, whatever. <laughs> Do what you got to do to get Knack Three made. Let's let's make it happen. I mean, it would be kind of cool if if Team Asobi, which is like the last standing uh, uh, Japanese studio for well, I guess out, outside of Polyphony Digital, but they just make racing games. Um, but I I think if Team Asobi was it would be kind of cool to see like a, a crossover between the Astrobot and and Knack. I think that would be kind of a cool like seeing these two. Uh, well, I guess I guess Knack's not really a robot. No, he's, he, he's more he's, of just like an. Uh, he's fairly technologically he's like a, advanced. Like a golem. I mean, he's tech technically technologically advanced, <laughs> but he's not really made of technology. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Well, it's weird. Because yeah, like, like <laughs> all his bits, they they, they yeah. fuel planes and they run electricity but it's not technology it's just rocks it, uh yeah. i don't know what's going <laughs> on with knack so my, my first thought was like okay you know uh astrobot being a robot and knack being a robot but then like he's not really a, a, a robot it's like it's like it's like future, a golem 
Yeah. So a golem, not a golem. Yeah, go- golem. There's no precious going on. Yeah, and and that we won't be seeing that for <laughs> uh, years, I imagine. Yeah. Who knows um, at this point? So I, I I think it would be kind of cool to see like a crossover between Astrobot and and Knack, um, mm-hmm. but. So there was all kinds of stuff going on, but then of course, uh, just dealing with all of the um, you know sicknesses and stuff, as we were prepping to do this episode, uh, Embracer Group decided yeah. to uh, just start acquiring yeah, a I bunch s- of companies. I sent again. you a text in the middle. I was like, I, I, was like uh, I think we've got our next <laughs> yeah. episode already figured out now. <laughs> yeah, like. And it still pertained to acquisitions. Um, of course. That's all we're going to talk about this year. Yeah, like a little bit of games on a gaming show, mostly um, financial reports. I'm going to need to go get uh, my MBA just so I can keep up with everything that's going on. Yeah. Um, so Embracer Group made a pretty big acquisition. Um, For not a lot of money. Yeah, like one thing that you you pointed out before the the show kicked off is this has to have been like they 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 had to have been kind of working on this for a while now um, because it was like earlier this year that um, I think what uh, Middle Earth Enterprises yes. was looking to sell mm-hmm. and then just a few months later uh, Embracer Group was like we've got money yeah here you go you're you're ours now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, for half of what they were originally offering. Because I think in February, when they started shopping around the Lord of the Rings property, they were talking about a $2 billion price tag. And I think the announced price that uh, Embracer got them for was $775 million. So all, just over a quarter of what they were asking for, really. Uh, <laughs> like, I, for, for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, like, probably, yeah. like, so much of the fantasy genre is on the back of the these uh, these stories and yes. like elves and orcs and ogres and all this like just so much of the the fantasy world is mm-hmm. pulled from yeah. lord of the rings and the hobbit like tolkien didn't invent fantasy but everybody who is writing fantasy now yeah. grew up reading those books and that is the basis for just about everything that comes out yeah and like i mean there there was there was a lot of other acquisitions that were tied around this one acquisition as well um tons of like smaller developers and publishers but also they picked up limited run games games. that was a weird one to me Like, like i don't know what the impetus behind this is to get a small niche publisher like maybe they just get a little bit of publishing help by having limited run games but i I, maybe something to do with like the the manufacturing side or i i have no idea i don't i don't i have really no idea what limited run games like it's a a great um a a great company that brings um you know physical releases to games that typically wouldn't see a physical release cool company I've, i've purchased a few things through limited run games um but i just don't quite know how they fit into this embracer group acquisition thing because it's just yeah, I don't know. They, they did recently open a storefront in mm-hmm. california i believe but even then like what he, I, I, but anyway so obviously the biggest part of this whole thing um we had speculated before that amazon yeah. might have actually been a a good uh buyer for all things lord of the rings but i don't know if good is the right word but (laughs) (laughs) uh, (laughs) i I, I um, mean the 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 buyer that makes the most sense because they have the most invested into the lord of the rings right now um and having the ability to take all of that which they can't use right now they're they're very limited in what they can actually pull from as far as lord of the rings lore goes for yeah. you know the rings of power tv show so it would have made a lot of sense for amazon to be like you know what that's available i don't care how much it is jeff bezos is going to walk in with a giant <laughs> dump truck he's going to carry a dump truck of money on his back into middle earth enterprises and signs group and say whatever the cost i don't care we need this franchise 
here's your money. Give me give me and the paper that says I now own this. I want my Lord of the Rings <laughs> NFT. <laughs> and oh God, oh. <laughs> we still I still have not been able to figure out when to. So anyway, to kick off the year, we had an, an NFT episode that just so many other acquisitions were taking place that just kept us from being able to really get that episode out there. So it's it's still there in the, in the void in the, somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, oh God, I didn't even think about the possibility of NFTs and all that stuff tied to the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Um, uh, but here's, as a Lord of the Rings fan, like I read those books every year. I watch the movies on a almost constant basis. Um, I'm both very excited about the possibility of more Lord of the Rings, but at the same time, I'm very cautious about what people would want to do with that franchise. Like, Lord of the Rings fans are some of the most... You have to stick to the material and don't stray outside of that. I'm not one of those people like... If you want to do a Gollum story and tell me all about stuff that never happened in the books is only kind of implied at, tell me all the stories you want. As long as they fit into the world of Middle-earth, I am perfectly fine with more stuff in that universe. Um, Which, you know, like anybody who you know, just read up on some interviews from like Peter Jackson to, to realize that it is a very cherished mm-hmm. um, source material. And uh, like we, we were talking a little bit before before filming of just like I'm a huge fan of Lord of the Rings and just what Peter Jackson did on, you know, for the movies, just like that continual just yeah. they, they basically shot all three movies pretty much at one time um and i think maybe that's just what really made those movies Mm -hmm. just flow so well together um i watched one of the hobbit movies and i can't remember i honestly can't remember which one and it just didn't quite vibe the same way as uh the, the trilogy did and um but just the possibilities like you know with like Marvel and and Star Wars and like these huge multimedia uh, properties, um, I mean DC has been trying for uh, years now to try, to try to make their own. Um, DC is the example expanded. of not how to do an extended yeah. universe. Like, or I get, let me take that back. Yeah. Universal is the way is the perfect example of how to not do a extended universe that that whole monster universe which could have been really cool was just handled so poorly um yeah and then you've got dc who are another example don't follow them do the marvel Mm -hmm. thing Mm -hmm. but be careful about it because marvel's starting to fall into that trap of maybe extending that extended universe a little too far yeah darn you phase four um for the most part, I just really hope that they can. I, I I know they're not going to, but I would love to see Robert Downey Jr. come back. Like he, I just cannot see anybody else uh, playing Tony Stark. I, yeah. I, they can try. They can try. But yeah, that that's that's part that's part of the excitement of stuff like that, and also part of the thing that hurts yeah. those things is because when you've got characters or people that have established the look of a character if you deviate from that people get really leery about wanting to accept another version of their character and the lord of the rings is going through that right now yeah. with and, some of uh, the characters in the, the rings of power and uh not being I played mean, by the same people as in the lord of the rings movies. i mean even like the uh the the, the golem game that we referenced earlier just kind of the just, just how he looks but also i mean kind of referencing back to square enix uh the, the avengers of the game yeah like oh and guardians of the galaxy yeah like just deviating from the the, the more popular style i mean even god of war ragnarok they, they showed off how thor is gonna look and they're like that, that. that's not thor <laughs> that, that's not like, that's not chris Hemsworth. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't look anything like him. Like, see, I think though, get... with 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 God of War, they're doing the right thing and just going completely <laughs> yeah. the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, the problem that the, the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff <laughs> ran into was they they tried to make them look sort of like those movie characters, but enough that 
they yeah. don't have to pay for the likenesses <laughs> of those yeah. characters and yeah. they just look wrong so yeah. you either have um, to completely erase people's memory of what those established characters look like and act like and sound like or you have to just embrace it and pay what you got to pay to get those those likenesses and, and such well speaking of embracing um with the embracer group um i I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure like i i looked back over the last two years of of their acquisition sprees this is not the first time oh, that no. they have no. gone on a a a, a a a buying spree a spending spree um it, it's almost like they're just walking through a mall and they're like, I want this, and I want this, and I want this, and I don't care how much it costs. I want it all. Yeah, the thing is, though, they're, they're walking behind, like, uh, you know, the super shoppers of Microsoft and Sony and being like, oh, <laughs> they didn't take that? Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, let me just yeah. sneak in right before you guys get that little thing that nobody yeah. cares about, but we're going to yeah. turn into this big thing. Uh, if you look at it, I've got their timeline pulled up of everything that they've bought, and they've got a, they own a lot of stuff. Like, they are as big as Microsoft and Sony in terms of the stuff that they own and the names that they own that you've either and didn't realize they bought or forgot they bought. And it seems like the acquisitions are kind of getting bigger as time mm -hmm. goes on. Like, uh, they just got Crystal Dynamics and IDOS Montreal, and they've, they've, they've purchased Middle Earth Enterprises. They, they own almost anything that was THQ, so like Saints Row and like it seems like as time has gone on they're like okay well we can start really flexing some of this money that we have yeah but yeah but if you look at it they, they own volition <laughs> which is was a big name for a while they are you know the saints row developers i think uh, uh, red faction they own a... uh i'm trying to i've got the full list here uh, Saber Interactive, which is a big time, you know, name. They own like all of the like Mud Runner, uh, isn't uh, the NBA isn't, Playground uh, stuff. Sab Saber Interactive is, are are they? Shaq for some reason, Boom. I'm thinking that they they took over um, Old Republic. Is that what? I think I, Saber took over some some game that was in development but i can't quite so, remember no um they own well they own a, a aspire which is doing old republic which maybe maybe they not own, they own zen studios which i didn't realize and you know that's the the pinball people yeah uh they do such a good job with their uh their pinball games as well like they own gearbox embracer group owns gearbox and you think of gearbox as their own thing yeah like so, they they own Borderlands, mm -hmm. which uh, kind of a big franchise, um, which also has a new um, the, the new Tales from the, the new Borderlands. Tales from the coming. Borderlands coming. Yeah, I'm very excited about that. I love the first Tales from the Borderlands. Um, um, and Embracer Group's not just buying games; like they own Dark Horse Comics. Yeah, uh, which was I, I saw that and I was like, well, I mean, at, at, as long as you keep you know allowing them to. to to do more of the, like, off the wall, mm -hmm. not so mainstream, like uh, manga and graphic novel, uh, yeah. uh, you know, books and publishing, like, but, like this, ah, I, I was, you know, I was, I was fairly concerned with Tencent buying everything up, but now. Now I'm also like, well, like, like Embracer Group could just swoop in and pick up. Like, how did they get Lord of the Rings for half of what they were asking for? Yeah, I don't know how you get the Lord of the Rings for less than what the original asking price was. Um, like, because that's the kind of that's the kind of franchise that I think a bidding war happens and the price goes up, not down. Yeah, not not down. Like, so for for. They they could have bought like three bungees for for what, for for for, for what they paid for the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Like, I mean, I, I think Bethesda went for nine nine million, or Zenimax Media went for nine million or nine nine, nine billion, billion, not, not yeah. million. Um, 
man, if Zenimax Media was, was sold for nine nine million dollars, like that, <laughs> would, ooh. Uh, hmm. But anyway, uh, so I I think like, you know, with Amazon, I, I I was also kind of bouncing back and forth on this as well because, like, Amazon has has really put a lot of resources behind uh, the Wheel of Time, which is another fantasy uh, story about um, just the, the, the way that threads make magic and all kinds of stuff. I'm probably butchering the actual... Uh... <laughs> I've never actually read those books. I want to, but each of them are like 700 pages long. They're ridiculously yeah, like, long. and It's like 30 books in that series or something. Yeah, so I'm probably not going to be diving into that anytime soon. But... Like, so they've got the Wheel of Time, and then they announce the Rings of Power. So they've got two yeah. fairly substantial fantasy, fantasy shows going on. But that just kind of made me think that Amazon was interested in acquiring mm -hmm. Middle Earth Enterprises because they're like, well, we've got Wheel of Time, but we're also going to be doing this that ties in with the, the Lord of the Rings because we see ourselves having a pretty substantial future with them and... and I do kind of wonder if Embracer will be like, okay, well now for these additional seasons, you're going to have to pay a little bit more because yeah. uh, you're, you're going to be putting us in the same like release schedules as the Wheel of Time. And we think that we own the, the bigger the bigger property here. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I don't know the, the ins and outs of that deal and what's already in, play, in place and uh, what is, you know, sort of up for negotiation. Um, there's also but, that uh, war, the War of the Rohirrim movie that's coming, I think in 2024, yeah. the animated uh, Rohan movie, um, which looks really good. The the couple of things I've seen from that 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 movie is embracing the Peter Jackson look of everything, and it's bringing uh, Miranda Otto back as the narrator for mm. uh, that, which makes perfect sense. Um, and I'm glad they're doing that. They're tying that anime into the Peter Jackson timeline for Lord of the Rings. Well, and I i mean, do, do you think Peter Jackson will come back to, to do some new movies? Do you think? I, uh... I doubt it. Like, I, I would love it. I think Peter Jackson is, if anybody is going to be the head of that franchise, it needs to be Peter Jackson. But I think he's probably done. Um, Amazon didn't really pay him much attention uh in <laughs> wanting uh, and the people that yeah. had been working on the peter jackson lord of the rings stuff that had also come over to work on this they let them go early in the process um so a lot of the people that could have brought some uh comfort to lord of the rings fans they they got rid of them pretty early on in the production oh, yeah. process so it's i don't know a, i would love but, it I would more stuff attached to the Peter Jackson portion of Middle Earth is a good thing <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I agree. Uh, it's just like in, it, with Star Wars, anything Dave Filoni and John Favreau touch is the best part of Star Wars and they're the ones that should be doing Star Wars. Um, <laughs> um well, I, I it was so this was was definitely something that that caught us by surprise like oh absolutely like i'm i'm still baffled like just the the fact that embracer group snatched not not just the fact that they snatched up uh, you know such a, a powerful property but like what kind of negotiations were going on that they got it for less than they were asking for like, yeah i would that, love to have been able to listen to to all like, of those meetings like i just, I, it's just, hmm. like i said it's just very surprising and the, the fact that it, it just kind of came out of nowhere which i guess some of these uh, acquisition like i mean microsoft buying activision blizzard was mm -hmm. also something that was just like oh microsoft is buying activision blizzard <laughs> okay. okay well <laughs> i didn't know that was happening or um but yeah yeah but, just... but microsoft buying activision is somehow less surprising than a company <laughs> yeah. like embracer group buying buying lord of the rings yeah i i am very like i'm optimistically 
cautiously optimistic about yeah the future yeah that's uh i'm, I'm hoping for great things it, it seems like they're just kind of buying these companies up and being like okay well we own you but you just you yeah. do what you've always done. We We're bought just... we bought you because you're doing the things that you're doing, and we don't want to screw with that. So keep doing what you're doing. Just make sure the money comes to us. Is basically yeah, what it what they're doing. Um, so I I like hmm. I, who knows what else could possibly happen this year. Um, yeah, I, year's I, not I, over yet. <laughs> yeah, we. We're halfway through August. Like we're halfway through August, and just big company after big company after big company just keeps getting just acquired and folded into even larger companies. And yeah. I'm just uh, waiting for the day we have the uh, the Ubisoft has been bought episode and the Square Enix has been bought episode <laughs> because yeah, those those seem like they're going to happen soon. One thing that I feel like we we can be pretty confident on is I don't think we're going to have a, a uh, EA gets acquired by somebody because they can't find anybody to buy them. <laughs> um, Please buy us. Yeah. No, we don't want you. Go like, away. We, like, we've seen what you have done with all of these really talented teams that you've had over the years. and um, Now they're all making Madden. Yeah, and uh, not even good ones. So... Um, but yeah, like I, for the most part, I haven't really done a whole lot of gaming or streaming over the last yeah I week either. and a half. Um, just with everything going on, like I'm, like I said, still dealing with all kinds of congestion and crap that just won't go away. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to get some stuff, uh, you know, going up again over, uh, luckily I had a little bit of like a backlog on some, some stuff that so I'm. Know, not rushing to get things done, but hopefully I can get some streams going again. Uh, probably going to play some like kill zone stuff. Um, now that you know the online servers are down, perfect time to start playing. Exactly. Um, but not sure. But what what all do you think you've you've got planned on on your side since uh, I, I you're getting better i hope you're, you're, you've we're all, we're on the upside i have i felt really good i was only down for one day really um and then it was just a runny nose for a couple of days and a cough for a little bit longer uh, but yeah i haven't been doing much in the last couple of weeks we've had our wednesday streams we've been doing some jackbox on the wednesday night right. streams um i don't have any interviews or anything planned in the next couple of weeks so i'm looking for some people that if they want to be on the show um to come on and guests on the show so uh, well, not, a, not a ton planned but hopefully we're getting back into the swing of it that's uh, for anybody watching you know the, the the fives and tens of you um if you know of anybody that would like to be interviewed you know procedurally generated um like i said in, in the uh, beginning of the episode uh, yeah i think at the beginning of the episode head's a little still foggy um i think i recorded it uh, the the Sonic Triple Trouble mm -hmm. interview that you did and just uh, that game is know. out and is really good. You should play it. It's so good. That's, that's I I definitely need to check it out. I'm a I'm not the biggest Sonic fan, but I, I I grew up more with Sega than I did Nintendo, so Sonic was definitely pretty well represented. Uh, so I definitely I didn't have a Game Gear, so being able to to play some of those games are, uh, uh, you know, on on the docket, but. This has been episode thirty-two of Gamer Vision. Probably, and we're in we're in the thirties. It it it's capable of drinking and driving, and it it's starting to have to take like ibuprofen for its back. And oh man, it, it it's getting up there. But episode makes weird noises when it sits down. <laughs> it just creaks and it yeah. But anyway, um, I've been Jeff from Just One More Level, and I'm Tony from Procedurally Generated. <laughs> Uh, gotta work on an outro. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you with the next episode of Gamer Vision here on YouTube. Bye, everybody. <laughs>